Today I'm being totally transparent and deep diving into a section of the structural engineering industry that I think is the least transparent, and that is structural engineering salaries. I'm going over every position that I've held from my first internship all the way up to my current position. I'll be letting you know what I currently make from a salary as a structural engineer, as well as in my previous positions in the past. And I'm going to be tying together um, my credentials and my prereqs at each of those milestones that got me those salaries. Don't put your pencils down and don't fall asleep in the auditorium like Jose, because I think you're going to be finding some great bits of information that are going to make you more confident in your next pursuit of an engineering position. So way back in 2013, uh, I was a junior in college and I actually was able to acquire a summer internship program with a local construction company. Technically, I was in the position of a field engineer, um, but I was still you know, the most green that I could possibly be in meaning that I was brand new. Uh, this is my first kind of professional career glimpse as to a type of job that I could get as someone coming out of school with an engineering degree in civil engineering. I was only able to secure really this one internship and it was, I was called back actually last second when the school year was already over and I didn't think I even had a job. So uh, I always kind of struck out when it came to internships, even though I thought I tried really hard in trying to capture one of them. Uh, some of my other buddies always had way more luck. They had like three or four or five. Uh, I was happy to just be with this one company. They ended up offering me an hourly wage of $30 uh, per hour. That's US $30. I don't know what it translates to anybody else out there. This is gonna be all Strictly jobs within the US. That's the only place I've ever worked. So a summer internship it lasted approximately three months But I was working full-time 40 hours per week uh, Each week that I was there for the three months flash forward to 2014 and they actually called me back the next summer um, To come back and have the same position. Um, there was no pay increase or anything like that um, And again, I was happy to be at that price point. So I was fine with it and from what I've heard over my career so far, it's that the construction industry has more money available to go towards salaries and what people get paid than the design side. Even though we're all part of kind of that collective engineering, construction, and architecture field, you, if you're searching for a larger salary, it's you're more so going to find it in the construction field. Flash forward to 2015, and I have now graduated with my bachelor's in civil engineering, uh, and I've actually stayed and gone through an accelerated program and obtained my master's in structural engineering. I've passed the FE exam, so I am now a you know certified EIT engineer in training, and I am ready to find my first full-time engineering position. So I have those three credentials, uh, plus my grades and hopefully my charm to try and find a job. One thing led to another, and I actually was able to land a job with a company who to this day, uh, I have great ties with. Uh, the people there were some of the best I've ever met. And I applied for the position uh, of what they called an engineer one, which is basically your most base level as a junior engineer coming out of school into the workforce. They offered me a full-time position with benefits and 401k and all that kind of stuff. but. I'm gonna leave all of that to the side because it can vary from company to company. And for this video, to keep it simplistic, I'm just going to talk about the salary portion. My salary was offered at 55,000 US dollars. I'm a proponent of always countering uh, with a potential employer towards your salary. I never think you should just settle on the first number that comes out because it really is. It's a discussion of both parties as to determining what your worth is and how you are going to benefit the company, not how badly uh, you want to be a part of the company. They should want you just as badly as you want to be a part of them, if that makes sense. And for you to not throw your hat into the ring, I think does you a disservice. No matter how the interview went, no matter you know if you even like this company and you have others down the pipeline, always, always, always make your voice be heard um, and tell them forthright what you believe you are worth. You wouldn't believe how much further you will get by just throwing your hat in the ring. I ended up countering with $60,000 for a base salary. And I know some of you are saying, wow, $5,000, what a big freaking gap. Like, wow, he really went for it. You know what? It was big to me at the time and that felt like an appropriate number in my head. Ultimately, they countered back at 59,000 and that's what we settled on for my base salary for my first full-time engineering position. This company was located in the greater Boston area, and I bring this up because cost of living is a real thing and needs to be included in this. 
a $60,000 salary in the middle of nowhere Montana can stretch a whole lot further than um, in downtown Manhattan. I stayed for two years at this company and I learned an incredible amount in a sh what felt like such a short period of time. But I wanted to expand my knowledge. I wanted to learn about earthquakes, learn about mass timber, learn about wood construction. And I also wanted to explore not just the world, but uh, more of my own country. So I packed up my things and moved out to the West Coast where I landed myself a new structural engineering position in one of Oregon's major cities. There's only one. This was a big time firm that worked on uh, really, really large projects uh, from around the world uh, that I was really excited to be a part of. I was not offered a salary that was higher than what I was previously used to and was offered a total salary of $57,000. While the cost of living of Oregon is less than that of Boston, Massachusetts, I still to myself did not want to go backwards. I felt that I had now more experience so that my pay should be increase from what I was previously being paid. I again countered as all of you should and we eventually settled on a starting salary of $64,000. To some of you out there, not a very big jump at all. But to me, I was happy and I was in a place where I knew I was going to be learning an incredible amount in the areas that interest me the most in structural engineering. And to me, this was okay because I was more concerned about developing my professional skills rather than bumping up my salary. In hindsight, I think that you should be keeping track of both of those in tandem. Uh, but back then, I was so much wanting to be a sponge and soaking up as much knowledge as possible as quickly as possible. And this was the place I was gonna do it. Uh, and that's what I focused on. Flash forward four years now, and we now find ourselves in the year 2021. That's right, right in the middle of the pandemic, the world's on fire, everyone's going crazy, sea levels are rising and the moon's gonna explode and I don't know. But yes, I actually found myself looking for a new position during this time. Uh, I felt that I had kind of changed what I wanted for myself um, in a career path within structural engineering and the current company that I was in I didn't think they could provide me that path. So that just simply meant I had to find somewhere else where they could accommodate that path that I was trying to find. I think everyone today is starting to think that because people leave places, it means that instantly they hated everyone there or they hated the process or they weren't getting paid enough or you know they were miserable or they weren't in the right space. You know, I, And for me, that just wasn't true. It just, I was able over time to realize what what things were important to me for a career. And four years ago, it was something completely different. And then over that time, it changed and evolved and turned into something new. And I simply said, I don't think I'm putting myself in the best position possible uh, to reach those goals and to, to hit those milestones that I wanna hit in the current place that I'm at. So I tried to do as best of a job as possible and not burn bridges and maintain my contacts and move on to a new spot. Don't ever think that because you're leaving a place that that means that it's for a bad reason. You can always keep good contacts with your previous employers. That's if they're willing to also be professionals and kind people that realize that yes, at the end of the day, it's just a job. It's just a career. Um, we're just people just trying to find the things that we want to do with our lives. If if they get upset because you're leaving, that has nothing to do with you as long as you maintain your professionality. But let's go through the checklist. I now have an additional four years of experience, which brings my total tally up to roughly six years of professional design experience. Um, uh, three of those years, I was designing as uh, a professional engineer, so I passed my PE exam and officially became registered as a professional in the state of Oregon, as well as the state of Massachusetts. And then I have all those other prerequisites from before. So I'm feeling pretty confident about myself. I have now managed several jobs of varying size, some small, some mid-size, nothing too crazy. Uh, but I have seen the management side of things. I've written proposals. I've, I've starting to get involved with um, requests for proposals or requests for qualifications, which is something more uh, responsibility around the management side of the engineering field rather than the design uh, part of the field where you were just running calculations all day. But I was still a structural designer. So I was running those calculations in tandem with doing those other things. 
but I had a taste of the management side of things. You know, and it's kind of funny because this is my most recent job hunting process, but I actually remember this one the least. Maybe that's the COVID floating through the air or the self-isolation, I'm not sure. But I believe that I was offered a position for roughly 82 to $84,000. Let's call it $83,000. Let's just split the difference. Uh, I argued that I wanted to be in the $90,000 range, uh, some, somewhere within the, the 90 to $100,000 range for my abilities. I felt that that was what I was worth. This actually went back and forth for quite a while for a couple of different companies. And eventually uh, it was landed on at 87,000. And from some of the other benefits, I felt that that was actually justifiable and I was satisfactory with that salary. I think this does a great representation of showing that, hey, both parties have objectives that they're trying to hit, they're trying to meet, and both are in discussions to come together to find really a resolution and a fair ground that uh, that appeases both parties. You can push back and at the end of the day, you can also be told no, just as much as you can be told yes. Um, so don't always think that because you are negotiating for uh, a higher salary, it means that you're going to get it because you asked. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask. If you found this informative and it gave you a little bit of confidence for your upcoming interviews or your salary negotiations, leave a like down below. I'd appreciate it a bunch. Hopefully I'm not the last one that will be giving you information and giving you more confidence with what your self-worth is in the structural engineering field. And as always, subscribe if you're liking the vibe that we got going on here. We are very, very close to 5,000 subscribers. We are rocketing through the moon and that's awesome. We're now bigger than, let's see which means that we are now greater than the undergrad population at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. Freaking This is Rich with Team Kesteva. It's great to see everybody, and I'll see everybody later.